Today I upgraded my electric bicycle battery to have an, a balance lead on it so I can now balance the cells with my automatic battery balancer. Here's how I did it. This is my homemade battery pack for my electric bicycle. It is 24 volts at 35 amp hours. I plan to have two of these finished. But unfortunately, last time I tested it out, I had issues with balancing each of the cells, or packs of cells in parallel, because uh, some cells could get higher than others, and then if that went on too much, it could kill the cells. So I got a IMAX V6 battery balance charger off eBay. These are extremely uh, cheap pieces of crap, but the thing is, it's easier to buy these and just throw them away whenever they break than to buy an extremely expensive one. And I got some random bits from Radio Shack. So let's add the balance charging feature to my homemade uh, bicycle battery so we can ensure that it doesn't blow up on me. So first of all, what is battery balancing and why do you need it? Well, here's some lithium ion cells. I just grabbed them from some dead laptop batteries. And these usually run up to about 4.2 volts and they're dead around 3.7 volts. And so if you hook them together in, in series, they this little battery pack right here is 8 volts end to end. If you were to charge it at 8, at 8 volts, there isn't really anything to ensure that each battery would get half of the charge. Like one could be 3 volts and one could be pushed up to 5 volts, short, short, uh, short circuiting this one. And then this one would be pushed up to 5 volts, short, short circuiting that one. Or whatever. Actually 8 volts for that one. But oh well. Pretty, uh, pretty much lithium batteries they they don't settle back down to the right voltage like for instance a lead acid battery you can fill this lead acid battery with like 20 volts you can like really charge it really hard and then whenever you let it sit it'll go back down to 12.8 volts or whatever well this one not this one this one's dead but you get the idea the a functioning lead acid battery would do that it, it wouldn't just keep letting the voltage rise and rise and rise but if you took one of these and hooked it up to a five volt power supply you could just keep cranking up the voltage until it until it short circuited and so we don't want to do that unfortunately on my battery pack these battery cells or she the first four ones are like 3.9 volts and the last ones are like 4.08 volts so already it's getting out of balance so what we have to do is we have to connect a wire lead coming out from each uh, section on the batteries in, in, in series and now there's six batteries in, in series or six packs in series and so we'll have to have seven wires because like if you have two batteries there's actually three connectors four uh, uh, three batteries and then be four connectors so six batteries and you have seven connectors and now those connectors will go through this cable into this battery charger the IMAX, uh, the, the IMAX B6 battery charger and it, it'll monitor the voltage of each, of each cell and make sure it doesn't overcharge them or uh, over discharge them because this thing can also discharge but I doubt I'll really use that feature. Also it can calculate uh, how many milliamps go into your battery so I can actually know for sure how many milliamp hours or how many amp hours I have in this battery. Now unfortunately for the balance charging socket they call it it's not really a connector that I can easily find so I happened to find that I had a ribbon cable and that had a connector on it similar to it and I just kind of like chipped off some of the plastic so it would fit in there so now I do have a connector that will fit into there which is good but the thing is I don't want to have to find find or order from eBay a bunch more of these connectors and then have to wait two weeks to get them in so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have I'm gonna turn this wire this ribbon cable into a little adapter so on one end I'll have the balancing connector socket thingy doodad that will fit inside of the charger and on the other end I'll put a 9 pin connector now this is a 9 pin D sub connector uh, that, that's the connector that you had for like the, the controller port on the Atari 2600 and Sega Genesis just if you wanted to know what that is and this these kind of connectors you can find them everywhere so I got a couple of, a couple of these connectors and we'll wire this up but before that before we do that Let's wire this up properly. To be, uh, to be honest, I only need seven wires coming off of this to really uh, put my thing together. So I'm, I'm only going to have to solder like seven connectors. Now, how am I going to hook this up? Okay, actually, this is how my battery's hooked up. This is negative, this row right here. 
that goes to positive so the difference between here is four volts that goes through here the, the both these are all connected so that goes through here that's eight volts and then it goes down to here that's 12 volts 16 20 24 volts because uh, all, all of the batteries in this way are connected in parallel and all the batteries this way are connected in series or actually all the packs in this way are connected in series so I'm gonna have to connect the wires where the batteries hook together in series. So like one uh, one wire right here will be coming off, one wire, wire right here will be coming off, here, 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 and here. And I'll just have, probably have them all stranded together in a sizably long cord maybe, I don't know. But let me go get my wires and heat up my soldering iron. Well, I forgot I got this already at the uh, Jacksonville Fall Festival. It's telephone wire from, I don't know, 1940s, 1950s. I mean, just look at the spool. It looks pretty old. But it has four leads in each wire, and I think two wires will, be, will do just fine. And it looks chunky enough to be able to handle the charge, too. So awesome. Let's solder it to the battery. Now we have both the lead connector ribbon cables connected, so we have a, a total of seven wires coming out of it. And I adjusted them, they're all, are all hooked up nice and fine. Now we just ha need to ha add a D-sub connector to this cable and to these two cables. So then I can plug the battery into the charger. And I want to make sure I don't short these out, because there is a four volt difference between these, which could and a four volts which could supply like 50 amps of power. I'm putting negative as pin one. So now whenever I connect up this connector to it, this pin will be the negative. And here's the last pin going in. Now we have our balance lead connector. We just got to put the other end on here. Now here comes the tricky part, because I have to make sure that I match the pinout on the battery charger with the pinout that I already set on my balance lead. So I'll put my power plug inside here. And on my charger, there's a plus and a minus. I imagine this means that all the wires go in an orientation of minus to plus from right to left. So this would be 0 volts, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 volts. So this is plus and this is negative. Unfortunately, the IMAX B6 doesn't come with a power supply. It just has you gives you these connectors to hook it to a 12 volt battery. But you can input anywhere from 11 to 18 volts, which is pretty awesome. I'm just going to use my universal power supply. Luckily, the cables from my universal power supply fit into it, so <laughs> that worked out pretty good. So we have 
plus. We have minus, and we have should be this unless it blows up. Let's see. So now the battery's all hooked up. Let's go through the menus. Still trying to figure this thing out. And balance charge, six cell. Uh, hit enter. And now it's charging. Over here we have our milliamps, or, or our amp hours that are going into the battery. And over here we have our batteries themselves. You can see they are they were a little bit out of phase or not phase but they were unbalanced a bit and the cells are getting pretty close I'll just leave it on the treasure for longer and longer and also they were really out of whack whenever I first part of, put it on the the balancer so if I char if I balance it every time I charge it now, then the cell shouldn't deviate too much, and, and it shouldn't take so long to balance them. And so here's the battery pack I'll I'll put back together, nice and sturdy, with the two connectors coming out. Or actually, uh, three pl uh, positive, negative, and balance. Now, as for balancing the voltage on my old battery pack, I'm not going to worry about attaching a balance lead to it, because then. It would be too much of a hassle because it's kind of a rat's nest as it is. I'm just going to hook these together with alligator clips in parallel so they all stabilize in voltage. But anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.